Steve, but I think he always wants to make you aware that he is Kerwin Bell, and he is a successful quarterback wherever he's gone. He has never played for a losing team. Here's the little shovel pass inside. Collins, Steve Muhammad with a shoestring tackle at midfield. Otherwise, that was going for big yards. Just a great job. Well, you know BC's bringing the pressure. When the defensive line are coming up there, what's the best thing he can do? Little pitch pass to pinball, let him do the rest on his own. He has got such great vision. We've talked about it time and time again. He can find the hole and cut on a dime, and that's the kind of back you want. 18 yards for pinball. Great vision when he's not seeing double. <laughs> First down near midfield. Pressure on. Bell took a hit, got it away, and Nigel Williams unable to bring it in. Johnny Scott turned up the heat on Kerwin Bell. Well, Johnny Scott wants to be there every play. He's a true competitor. He hates offensive linemen. He says, you know what? I may be your friend before the game, but during the game, you're my enemy. You can see him right now. He's working, he's working, he's working. He's right there. Just going to keep working. Nice hit after the ball, just to let him know that he's there. Like you, doesn't he? No, not during the game, but after, we're okay. We're cool. Seven sacks on the year. Again, that's that interior of BC front four. Scott and Chaters have made a lot of noise so far this season. Second and ten. Shovel pass Mitchell behind them. And Darryl Mitchell did a good job of just maintaining possession. And Johnny Scott, the tackle, it'll bring up third down. And one of the things we just saw a picture of Coach Don Matthews. One of the things he said is, you know what? We can do Mitchell, we can do pinball, anybody can run the shovel in this offense. We got just talented athletes, and that's what they try to do right here. Just a little quick pitch, hits him a little behind, and as you said, Mitchell does a great job of reaching back and grabbing that ball to prevent a turnover. They're so interchangeable that last week when Clements was experiencing double vision, he changed the call in the huddle between himself and Mitchell a couple of times. Kerwin Bell was confused, called timeout once, took a delay of game penalty another time because he wasn't sure if Mitchell and Clemens understood the call. Pinball just was trying to stay in the lineup with an injury. Here's Eddie Brown. Up to the 30-yard line and flags flying everywhere as Michael O'Shea made the tackle. 13-yard return for Brown. We haven't seen Eddie Brown really become a part of this PC offense yet. No, and usually they like to give you a little swing pass to Eddie or a hitch pass, bring him underneath the lineman, the big old lineman getting in front of him. But you're right, we haven't seen much of it. And we need to get him involved. I know if you're a BC fan, you're saying, where is Eddie Brown? We need to get him part of this offense. They call him downtown Eddie Brown for a reason. That's because he likes to go to the end zone. Let's see what happens. Holding was the call against Toronto. And the ball out to the 24 of BC. Check that, a holding call against BC, face mask against the Argonauts. Yeah, Eric Johnson doesn't like to get blocked. He's got his hand on the opposing player's face mask. No call at every time. Lions trail by four, first possession, second half. The fake to Drummond, and Allen looks downfield for Rod Harris. He's there, and Harris into Argo territory at the 47-yard line, forced out by Lester Smith. And Fahir Brown. And just a great play. You know what? You've got a quarterback with this kind of ability. Get him out. Don't sit him in a pocket. You can see him out there. He's got big Dan Payne rumbling in front of him, giving him added protection. Enough time. Great throw. Throw to just where Rod Harris can make the catch. And they get out of their own zone and put themselves in Toronto territory right now. 37-yard gain for Rod Harris, who really lit it up with Dave Archer a couple of years in Sacramento. He had 2,659 yards in two seasons. 16 touchdowns. Allen pumps once, pulled it down, and is brought down at the 47-yard line. Jermaine Haley, who played junior football in B.C. with the Surrey Rams and the Okanagan Sun, made the tackle on Damon Allen. Well, that almost looked like Damon Allen was trying to fool somebody by pump faking it to try and get everybody to turn back and see where he threw the football and then take off with it. Didn't pick up much yards to that. As a matter of fact, he lost a yard. Only two 300-yard games for Allen this season, and one was against the Argonauts. 355 yards and a pair of touchdown passes. In a 30-15 Argo win, Allen over the middle. There's Brown incomplete. 
Well, we talked about getting Eddie Brown in the offense. Damon is thinking about that himself. He brings Eddie, trails him across the middle right now. Just unfortunately throws the ball a little low. Eddie tries to do a little shoelace catch and of course hits the turf, can't grab it. Now they got to punt the ball away. Third and 11. You think about the weapons. So I asked Adrian Smith yesterday who the top receivers in the league that he has to face. And the first two he listed were BC Lions. And he says, I'm not saying it because we're playing them next. Alfred Jackson and Eddie Brown give me more trouble than anybody. Here's Bookman, and this time upended at the 10 yard line. Well, that's the first time they've contained him on a return in some time. A 40 yard punt by Louis. One yard on the return. Argos on top. Welcome back to Skydome, and we've spent some time tracking Robert Drummond's game as an Argo and now as a Lion. As the stats show, his rushing yards have tailed off dramatically from a year ago, 116 compared to 72.5 this year as a Lion. And the net offense also shows he's working within a different scheme in BC, one that perhaps is not as potent as the one he played on in Toronto. Chris? Carolina, he had 75 yards offensively in the first half, both receiving and rushing. Looks like in the second quarter they started leaning on Drummond Moore. Flag comes down and an incomplete pass as Bell tried to find Dimitrician in a crossing pattern. Well, anytime they throw that flag behind the offensive line, it's usually against one of the big boys. I'm sure you're going to get a holding penalty here. Looked like 65, Willie Williams. Well, it looks like pretty good protection, but right here you can see it right there in the corner there. You can't have the hands outside of the shoulder pads. Big Dwayne Morgan getting the call. No. Penalty declined, and it will be second and 10 from the Argo 10. Six receivers out. And Bell looking for pinball. Clements got turned around in his pattern and incomplete. Well, at least there's a good sign to that. And the fact is they had somebody on the man that time. The last couple times that Toronto has the ball, they've gone deep. There's been nobody around the receiver. So in BC's defense, they had covers that time. And Toronto, as a result, has to punt from deep in their end zone. Well, miscommunication there between Clements and Bell. Third down. And the Lions should come out of this with great field position. Prefontaine's best punt today came under pressure when he did well just to get the ball away. And let's see if Sean Graham tries to put some pressure on again. Eddie Brown, the lone man deep. High snap pulled down and the left footer gets a good one away. Brown back at his 45. Flag down as Brown is forced out at the BC bench. So a terrific punt by Prefontaine, 56 yards, and they're going to attack a BC penalty on top of that. Well, they're going to get a holding penalty, Chris, and one of the nicest things is Brendan Rodgers, who plays on all the special teams for Toronto, does a great job leading tackler. You see him coming down your field right now. You see Glenn Richards has got him right now by the shoulder. Now watch this. Now this you can't do. You can't hold on to that baby. Let him go. Referee's right there. Throws the flag. Cost your team 15 yards and puts you in a little worse field position. Wow. I mean, they should have had the ball near midfield. Instead, they're back at their own 39-yard line. Great job by Prefontaine and the penalty a bonus. Five minutes gone. Third quarter. There's another pump fake by Allen. Lots of time. Wide open, Ron Harris, and all Allen overthrew him by a stride. David would love to have that back. What a great shot there. The offensive line changes it up. They chop some of the defenders on Toronto down. They get up not expecting to know, not expecting a chop block first off. But look at Harris. What a nice release. Releases to the outside, then straight up the field. Wide open, broken coverage. He's there. Can't be the ball. He's just racing. He tries to reach out for it at the last second. It's just past him. And as you said, Damon Allen would love to have that one back. Harris has a touchdown catch this afternoon. Allen, second and ten. 
over the middle, complete, and he finds Harris there near midfield. David Al was quite candid yesterday, admitting that when a team's three and seven, the quarterback is the lightning rod, and he takes it all on him. But he what? says you got to have 12 guys on the same page. Looks like they've had that more often today. Oh, big time. They are working as a unit for once, and I think that uh, you look at this. He goes deep. He just misses Rod Harris. All of a sudden, Rod Harris comes right back to him, finds an opening, nice completion first down. Now Johnson and Drummond in the eye behind Allen, move in motion. Looking for Alfred Jackson, and Jackson brought it down. Adrian Smith was all over Alfred Jackson, and he still made the catch. Nice concentration by Alfred Jackson. Let's take a look at the offensive line of protection. They're bringing everybody. You can see Wilkshire hanging around, hanging around. Just a good job. They're bringing Max. It's called maximum protection because they're keeping Robert Drummond in there on the backside. Wasn't sure he stayed in bounds, but look at that footwork. Oh, that's unbelievable. That's landed as softly as you. <laughs> that's only when I'm trying to sneak in the house at night. First down, Lions on the move. Argo 36. They fake to Drummond. Allen to Jackson, and another first down, or close, and mark it at the 26, and it is indeed another first down, B.C. Well, Alfred's just taken up where he left off last year when he was the leading receiver for B.C. Lions. He's just turning Adrian Smith inside and out, working him, and of course, we talked about Damon Allen, his ability to use a scrambling ability to get outside, put more pressure on that cornerback. Does he come up? Does he go back? Makes it tough for a guy to cover a guy like Alfred Jackson for that long. 100-yard game for Alfred. Five catches, 104 yards. He was fourth in the CFL last year receiving, but number one among wide receivers. First down, Allen. Great protection. Here's Harris again, the intended receiver, just beyond his outstretched arm. But Rod Harris is giving the Argo secondary some trouble. Well, they're running a crossing pattern. The nice thing about that is Rod Harris is coming across the middle, and he's got to step on him again. It's just overthrown again. But I like the fact that Damon Allen's picking the right receiver. He's picking the guys that are open or have the best ability to catch the ball and make the big plays for BC, and that's making the right decisions. That's something he hasn't done for a little bit. Great protection on this drive for Damon Allen. But now at a critical juncture, second and 10, BC, Toronto 25-yard line. Allen took the hit, gets it away, end zone, driven, and it was knocked out of his hands on a great defensive play by Kelly Wiltshire. The linebacker step for step with Drummond all the way down the field. Well, Kelly Wiltshire just does a great job. Let's watch Michael Shea on this play. He's reading it, reading it, reading it, looking for an opening. Here he comes to the opening. Great hit on Damon, but unfortunately, nice throw. Wiltshire, one interception, but he's got a ton of knockdowns, and this is why, because he comes down there, he gets his hand in there, takes what should have been a touchdown away from Robert Drummond. Instead, the Lions will have to settle for a 33-yard field goal attempt. Bookman is in the end zone if it's wide, but Louis is good again. We've got a one-point game now. Argos leading 24-23 with 7.18 to play. Third quarter. I'm up, I'm up. Let's go. Reminder, the CFL on CBC Internet site up and running once again for another year. You can get highlights, previews, and Chris Walby's expertise at that Internet address. And that's free. You have to pay for my advice. That's strange. <laughs> You're always giving free advice. <laughs> Here's Clement. Look at Donaldson down there again. The pinball bounces off him. And another tackle. Four guys get a shot at him before he finally goes down at the 32. Steve Glenn ultimately brought down Clements. Interesting story about Glenn. His grandfather played for the Toronto Argonauts in 1945 when they won the Grey Cup. That is a long time ago. Grandfather Tom Glenn. <laughs> I kind of like the ring of that. Grandfather Tom. Well, the rushing yards have not been a factor today for the Argonauts. And you can see when they rush the ball effectively, their record has been up. That may be the only real criticism of this Argo offense. Here's Clements outside and forced out of touch by Andre Strode. 
Well, I'll tell you what, you've got to give Toronto. We talked about the Kerwin Bell getting hit a lot, but the offensive line has done a great job today. And in particular on Dave Chaters, you can see him right here. He's coming up. You know, he's a force, and Chris Joskis is just doing a great job of keeping him away from the quarterback. Allowing Curran to get him. There he is again. They pick up a twist between him and Johnny Scott. When your offensive line is doing stuff like this, you see him right here. He's trying everything. He's trying to get in there. He's gone against everybody, and you got to give him all credit. The boys in blue are doing a job. Here's English over.